Round three here at my hometown zoo. Before our tour starts, I just wanted to mention a few things. First of all, thank you everyone for the amazing likes and comments and, well, how high the views are for the, my past two episodes. And second, if you're new to this channel, hit those like and subscribe buttons to join the Columbus crew. The last time we were here, we took a safari through Heart of Africa to see giraffes, zebras, cheetahs, and lions. But this time, well, like the last episode, we are still in Africa. And that tour will be our expedition through the rainforest. The Congo Expedition. I don't know when this region opened, but I do know it opened right after I was born. The Congo may be one of the smallest regions here at the zoo, but small size does not matter in this area. Because through this African rainforest, we will meet some pretty rare treasures, including a few animals that we'll probably never see before and probably will never see again. Especially one species that we will encounter on this tour. Is everyone ready? Good. Because without further ado, let our expedition through this beautiful African rainforest begin. The Congo region is at the furthest part from the zoo's entrance. And the easiest way to spot it is the Congo food market. Which is a great place to sit down and eat. But anyway, we come across our first exhibit. Though, unfortunately, there are no animals on this side. But that's alright. We'll be able to see them later on. As we continue through the boardwalk of this African rainforest, we come across our next exhibit. For those of you who think, yes, you are correct. This is in fact an aviary, home to two species. The popular one is the African Grey Parrot which, understandingly, has to be the most popular bird here in the region. Even though it rarely happens, if you want, you could try to talk to these birds and see if they will talk back to you. Which, on another tour, I'll show you another bird that mimicked us. Moving on, but not too far, to one of our first buildings, which I like to call the Rainforest Station, which tells us of what's happening to the rainforest of Central Africa. Almost like Cleveland's rainforest of what they're trying to tell us. But anyway, we get another viewing of the parrot exhibit. The main reason why I said these parrots are very smart, well, here's why. A few years ago, someone had a African grey parrot as a pet. And believe it or not, the parrot was actually used as a witness. The reason why the parrot was used as a witness, because, well, the parrot was a witness to a murderer, which obviously... The killer was put in jail, and the parrot was classified as a hero. But the parrots don't have this exhibit all to themselves. They also share with a Lady Ross Taraco, one of my favorite birds of the region. The only other time I've seen this species throughout my travels was at Cincinnati Zoo's Jungle Trails. Mostly the main reason why I love this bird is the colors of its feathers. While I was filming, I managed to caught another one of the parrots being a little funny. So, if you want to see a Taraco, come to Columbus to see this beautiful bird. But birds are not done just yet. Across from the hallway is a few info signs of the next upcoming exhibit. As well as windows of the next exhibit, as you can see right here. We're moving on, but again, not too far. To another open window. Right next to the exit of the rainforest station is another open window of the very first exhibit that we passed earlier, which, well, again, animals still hiding, but again, in a few minutes, we'll see it again. Like Asia Quest, this next stop that we're going to is an aviary, which for those of you who are afraid of birds, you're lucky because you have me. Even though this aviary was here, believe it or not, I have not explored the Congo aviary before until the beginning of summer of 2021. But anyway, the Congo aviary is home to 12 species of birds, including the Hadada ibis. A species that, well, for its call, almost tried to save their name. But they also share their exhibit with a sacred ibis, one of the most popular birds in the aviary. They also share it with a superb starling, 
One of my favorite birds, again, thanks to the feathers colors. Also a tamborian dove, the first time ever seen the species in any zoo. As well as white-headed buffalo weavers, which they're a little hard to find in the aviary. But not hard to find, it's a speckled pigeon. Because these birds are pretty active during the day. But, although I don't have footage of it, also a black crake. A bird that lives near water. Same goes for the hammercock, which almost is mistaken as a stork. The bird I'm usually looking for is the buff crested bustard, but unfortunately, no luck of finding it yet. But still, it's easy to spot their hot and hot teals, which, like ducks, like to be near the water. Another bird that's hard to spot is a common bobo, a bird that's kind of hard to pronounce its name. But my favorite too of the aviary is the beautiful blue belly roller. As you can see right here, it is so beautiful. And then finally, the most notable of the aviary, the black crowned crane. On my visit, I only got to see a couple of the birds, including the speckled pigeons right here, on the move on the ground, as well as a Hadada ibis going under the bridge. Hanging above the aviary, trying to look for food, is a superb starling, even though I don't have the best view. The bird I was easily to spot is the sacred ibis, apparently giving itself a good cleaning right now. Like the other birds, this was actually my very first time seeing a sacred ibis. But I was very lucky to catch the blue-bellied roller, apparently just chilling on the branch. And out of all the birds here in the Congo, the blue belly roller has to be my favorite bird of the Congo. Before I left, I spot the two black crowned cranes taking cover in the shade. And that's a good thing, especially with this heat. That's the last of the aviary. But don't worry, for those of you who want to see the birds again, we'll be seeing it on our way out through the Congo. Anyway, we're back on the main boardwalk. As you can see, we're back at the very first exhibit which this exhibits home for the black and white Columbus monkey. When I was little, between five and 10, I used to call them Columbus monkeys, which almost makes sense. But on this day, they were far from active, but you just had to go down a little more on the path to get a better view. A couple of years ago, you'll be able to go on a little hut, gain a better view of the monkeys, but that's now closed. But I still got a good view of the monkeys taking a break from the sun. We're moving on, but we're heading to something that's a little more exciting. Because, believe it or not, the next animal is Columbus Zoo's rarest animal. And it's also the Congo region's apex predator. As you can already probably tell, it's home to the African leopards. Currently, the zoo is home to two young males, Jamie and Tyron, which arrived here in 2017. As I mentioned, Jamie and Tyron are the zoo's rarest animals, and here's why. Over the past decade, zoos across America have been getting the more critically endangered and rare a more leopard, like I mentioned in Asia Quest. Currently, the population of both species, the more leopard, 100 in the wild, and the African leopard, over 100,000. So this is pretty much one reason why you should stop by Columbus, because Believe it or not, Columbus Zoo may be the only place left in North America to display the African leopard. But unfortunately, even though I like to keep talking about them, we kind of have moved on. But don't worry, we'll be seeing the leopards again in a bit. Speaking of the leopards, if you want to get a better view of them inside, go to your left right here to a small path that has two viewing windows to indoor habitats and another view of the outdoor leopard exhibit. Anyway, if you want to view the leopards, go to the left window, which, as obviously, the leopards were outside. But while you're here, you might even get to see their neighbors at the other side of the window, which, on this day, like the leopards, they were also outside, and we'll see them in a bit. Time to get back on the main path to, well, the Congo's stars. But watch out from above. Believe it or not, leopards are really good climbers, and they've been even known to stash their kills up in the trees. But anyway, we're at another part of the Congo Research Station. Along the way, you come across this statue, but don't worry, I'll tell you about this animal in a bit. 
Move further away from the statue, you come across he this huge glass panel, which gives you a look to our next stop. As you can see, it's pretty large. And, well, it's home to a very large primate, which, well, there was nothing at this view, but we just have to go down a little further to have a better look. While you're walking, you may even catch the animals on your right side of the path. But while I was filming, I did not see any animals on my right. But it's alright. On our next stop, we'll be seeing more animals in a moment. We now arrived at our second glass viewing area of this exhibit. It's still the same exhibit, but still a different view. Which kind of gives you the details of what animals live in here. Which is home to the world's largest ape. And that will be the Western Lowland Gorilla. Currently, the zoo is home to two troops. In the troop I spot outside, their leader is Katembi, this male right here. I can tell it's him because Katembi is really smaller than the other male that we have, which I'll show him later. Currently, Katembi's troop has about, obviously himself, three females, and one youngster. But to view the youngster, he had to go down a little more to the path. Again. At the next stop, well, it has much, much larger glass viewing areas like these. Like, very large. Almost like the lion exhibit back in Heart of Africa. Anyway, this gives you a much better look of the gorilla's outdoor habitat. I mean, it's kind of small, but I'm pretty sure the gorillas don't mind. Like I said, this troop has a youngster. And, well, even though I don't have the best view, here it is even though it's about 17, 18 months old. And I also caught Katembi on the move and also eating lettuce again, which I usually never see a gorilla walking out in the open like this. And I thought that was really cool. But again, have to move on. But gorillas are not done just yet. Really not done at all yet. Because the gorillas here don't stay outside forever as we head to another part of the Congo Research Station. And through these doors, as we head inside into the Gorilla Hallway, which gives you a look of the gorilla habitats inside. There are about four exhibits in here, total. And both troops share these exhibits at the time. Also in the middle of the hallway, you can also find the identification signs of all the gorillas here at the Columbus Zoo. Like I said, the Western Lowland Gorilla is the world's largest safe. On all fours, males can grow up to 4 feet tall and up to 400 to 500 pounds. And speaking of males, here's the leader of the larger troop here in Columbus. Which this male was born as a set of twins. Anyways, meet Macombo. About 40 years ago, he and his brother were born as a set of twins. A rare occurrence of gorillas born in captivity. I do not quite know where his brother went, but I'm pretty sure he's doing pretty well. And all the gorillas in Macombo's troop are all thriving and doing very well. Over the years, the Columbus Zoo has been very successful for the gorilla breeding program. Because believe it or not, the Columbus Zoo was the very first place for a gorilla to be born in captivity. And well, that gorilla that was first born in captivity was Colo, which was an all-time star here in Columbus. But anyway, Colo was born on December 22nd, 1956, making her the very first gorilla born in captivity. Colo has remained here in Columbus throughout her whole life, until she sadly passed away in 2017, a few weeks later after her big 60th birthday which makes her the oldest gorilla in captivity. As we exit, if you manage to look up, you might even see the gorillas walking above our heads. Our expedition through the African rainforest is already halfway over, but that doesn't mean we're not done just yet. The next outdoor exhibit is actually home to, well, our closest living relative that shares 99% DNA. And that relative would be the bonobo, which is also known as a pygmy chimpanzee. Even though the bonobo looks like a chimpanzee, 
It's actually the closest living relative of the chimpanzee. We're not done with the bonobos just yet. We still got a couple more stops. But let me just say, this has to be the greatest bonobo exhibit here in America. And, well, I agree. Because the bonobo exhibit looks really amazing. Especially with one cool setup that we'll see later. While we're still heading down, I still gotta say a few things. In the next few years, the Congo region, the whole entire region, except the Bonobo exhibit, which we're seeing right here, will be gaining a huge, and I mean really, really huge, renovation, which I'm really looking forward to, if that does happen. But anyway, we're almost in the next viewing of the Bonobo habitat, which is also kind of unique. Because, well, we're kind of going in a bamboo forest that has a little waterfall next to it. And, well, some days it could be a little misty. Anyway, we're at the second viewing of the same bonobo habitat. And, again, this has to be the greatest bonobo exhibit I have ever seen. Moving down again, we get in our view of the bonobo exhibit. And that really cool design that I mentioned. Because it's almost like a predator and prey setup. Even though it's not. Here we have a small little moat that, well, blends perfectly with the bonobos. But anyway, this ditch right here is home to the Red River Hog. Before Heart of Africa opened, I used to call them the Warthogs of Central Africa. Even though they don't look like it. Anyway, on the day I was filming, I saw one of the Red River Hogs taking a nap by a nearby bush. And well, the other Red River Hog, well taking an afternoon lunch now i said this is a cool design because well on this side you see the red river hogs and the other side you'll be able to see the bonobos kind of peeking in with the hogs almost like a predator prey setup even though they both don't harm each other which like the lion habitat in heart of africa this has to be one of the greatest designs here at the columbus zoo and aquarium Moving on again, but to our next stop, which I like to call the Primate Playground, which you pretty much see why in a moment. Which, well, the next few glass viewings, well, as you can see, is pretty much the indoor viewing of the bonobos during the winter season. I do not know how many bonobos are here at the zoo, but um, I do know that there are quite a lot of them here. And, well, apparently, this guy knows how to entertain us. Well, just by playing around, being really cute, that always wins us. It's always fascinating to see the bonobos actually playing on these jungle gyms or playgrounds. Because, well, I mean, like us, bonobos are very closely related. And, well, baby bonobos would probably use the jungle gym to play around. Even though it's hard to say goodbye, we have to move on again. Which, we only have a couple more stops left to go through our expedition through the Congo. Which is unfortunate. Along the way, you can either go to your left, right here, to view the gorillas, and, well, go back inside to the gorillas. And also, during the winter, that's also the pathway to the bonobos during the winter season. Which, straight ahead, we come across our next stop. Which, well, we can all know this next animal from the Lion King. Even though there's nothing on this view. So that means we have to go down just a little further. Along the way, you might even see signs of what's been going on with the rainforest. And how time is running out to save the Central African rainforests. Which we definitely need to do something. Anyway, we're at the glass viewing for... The famous Mandrill, which is the leopard's next door neighbor with that inside viewing. But anyway, the Mandrill is the world's largest monkey, even though they don't look like monkeys. The zoo is currently home to Matilda and Moshi. While I was filming, I had to capture a cardinal, as you can see right here. Which, believe it or not, for those of you who are living in Ohio, they represent a relative who sadly passed away. We are now heading to our last few stops here in this Congo rainforest. 
and home to, well, the Congo's most mysterious animal, and you will see why in a bit. Which, the next animal also has the largest exhibit here at the Congo. As we continue down the path, we get our first viewing of this huge exhibit, which, well, kind of represents a rainforest meadow like you see out in Congo. I caught this guy, but I want to get a closer look. Anyway, while we were heading to that guy, I couldn't help it, but I had to look to our left. Which, well, we couldn't resist, because this, in fact, is the backside of the African Leopard exhibit. Which, I caught one of the brothers being active once again. Something I don't see with the leopards doing very much. But anyway, as he was moving on, so were we. As we go to our right, we come across the two next exhibits. One of them we just already saw, and, well, the smaller of these two paddocks, which is right here. A few years ago, along with the other animal that lives in here, this exhibit also had the very rare black diker, which I really do not know what happened to them. But anyway, here's the first exhibit that we saw, and that one animal that we saw was the okapi, the most mysterious animal in these Congo rainforests. And here's why. In the year 1901, that was the first time the old copy was ever first discovered. And even though it has the legs of a zebra, the old copy is the closest living relative of the giraffe, which is why they're also known as the forest giraffe, which makes sense. Moving on, but old copies are not done just yet. And well, we're kind of going backwards almost. As we're making way to the exit, well, we still got about two more stops. The first stop, which will eventually be on our left, well, it's kind of something that we saw before the Colobus monkeys. And here it is, the bottom view of the Congo aviary, which this time I saw the sacred ibis on the ground and on the move. Also that I saw on the ground were the zoo's hot and taut teals even though the sun was very bright, and obviously staying close to the water. And flying above, getting out of the water, was the stork-like hammer cop. But I may have kind of forgot someone from earlier, and that would be the radiated tortoise. Even though this tortoise is native to Madagascar, I mean, it really doesn't hurt being placed in the Congo, since they do live here in the rainforest. We are now heading to our last stop here in our Congo expedition even though I can't even believe it already. But, again, it's home to a previously mentioned animal, something from the last outdoor yard that we saw earlier. This other large exhibit, the second largest here in the Congo, or the first, really doesn't matter, was also home to the Black Dikers, and, well, also home to the old copy, again. But on this day, it was, well, really shy and, well, wanted to be near the carousel. And our expedition ends with him or her. But anyway, I hope you learned something. That, well, our time here in the Congo rainforest not only shows what animals are in here, but also tells us of what's going to be happening here in the Congo rainforest. Because, well, believe it or not, well, especially with this sad thing, the Congo rainforest is sadly disappearing. As our world grows, the rainforests are disappearing, and time is running out, saving these African rainforests. So, we need to step up and save Africa's rainforests. The Expedition Congo, even though it's the furthest from the zoo's entrance, is still home to very popular animals, especially with the gorillas, okapis, and leopards, which has to be the greatest highlights in this region as well as the Red River Hogs and the Bonobos, which also had to be honorable mentions. And, well, obviously, my expedition was great with you guys, because, well, not only I got to hang out with you guys, but I got to see pretty rare treasures that, well, I probably had never seen before, especially like Blueberry Rollers, African Leopards, Red River Hogs, the Okapis, and Gorillas. I hope you enjoyed walking with me through our jungle journey here at the Congo Expedition here at the Columbus Zoo in Aquarium. But still, 
Jungles are not done just yet here in Columbus. The next time we'll be here in Columbus, well, we'll be going through the jungle again in Indonesia. And not only that, we'll be taking you through another continent away from Africa and Asia through our voyage through Australia's outback and the island of Tasmania. So you all know what that means. So stay tuned, like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you all for watching.